but be safe where and when you use this device. This video is to show how to fix or repair a magician's sparking ring, sometimes called a flasher ring, but more commonly known amongst magicians as a Funken ring because originally this device was made in Germany. And in German, the word Funken, F-U-N-K-E-N, means spark. The reason for the black tape that you see around this device, that's part of my fix which I will show you in a few minutes. Hello, my name is Larry Finley, and I like to combine magic illusions with science fiction themes. I am making some videos to share my ideas with fellow magicians. These devices have a history of poor quality and not working, but I've found a way to fix most of these. I just bought three flasher rings from Penguin Magic at $5 each with free shipping and one from Mad Hatter Magic for $6 plus $7 shipping. All four of these devices were dead on arrival and could not make any sparks. The reason why is they were all missing the flint spring that held the flint against the abrasion wheel. I painted one of them red to be less shiny. I have repaired them all, and just to demonstrate, I'll show you the repair that I made on each of these. This repair should do twice as many shows as a new device because the BIC flint is twice as long. I'm going to call my fix the BIC fix. First, let's open up this device to show you the inner workings and then later I'll show you the big fix, but it's not necessary to open up one of these to do the big fix, but we do need to be familiar with what's going on inside. If you ever need to open a Funkin device, you must pry open this little tab right at the top of the curve. And once you get it straightened out this way. It's very easy, relatively easy, to open this up and just angle this out. Inside you will see a little brass tube. See if I can bring this up where it looks bigger and you can see it. Sometimes called the barrel. And inside of it What's supposed to be there is a little flint. It's down at the bottom, followed by a little spring, which is followed by a tiny screw. It has a little flat notch on the side. You can't see it on this video very good, but trust me, that's what's supposed to be inside that brass tube. Well, when I've got, got the four rings that I showed you before, none of these were there. And even if you do have a piece or two, just throw them away. We're going to do something better. We're going to use the flint from a Bic lighter. And you notice that it's, it's much longer. And we're going to use the flint spring from the Bic lighter, which is way too long, but we're going to cut it about in half. And I'll show you that fix later. Also, I want you to notice how this mechanism works. When you push on this release button, you notice there's a little 
metal piece that it goes around and it stops the flint wheel from moving. So that's why when you wind up your device, you will not see it prematurely unwind. And then when you want it to unwind, you just push the button down. That, that, that releases the, um, the flint wheel and the thing shoots the sparks out. Something else to notice is there is another spring up here that holds the release button up. Ignore that and any explanations that we're talking about with a spring because the spring I talk about is a spring that's inside the brass tube which I refer to as the flint spring. Now let's reassemble this. I'm, I'm going to put the, the flint that I did have in it which was from the Bic lighter and I'm going to put the little spring I think it fell out when I was taking it out I think this is the one that was from the Bic lighter and I'll show you how to get the flint and the flint spring out of the Bic lighter you have to destroy a Bic lighter to do it but for now Let's get this thing reassembled. You angle it in this way so that you make sure that this metal case is inside the lips on all four sides. You can feel it here when it's going in and make sure the metal tab on the top is going inside the lip just barely there you go and I think maybe you can see but anyway this tab needs to be bent down and then it's fully assembled okay how do you get a replacement flint and replacement flint spring buy a big slim flick lighter one dollar from Dollar Tree. They come in many different colors. The Scripto lighter will work. However, the Bic lighter is better since it has a longer flint. Using a small flat bladed screwdriver and some uh, needle nose pliers Carefully and destructively open the metal top of the Bic lighter. You must be careful that the spring doesn't fly into Never Never Land while you're doing this process. Let's see if you can see it a little better. The spring and the flint reside directly under this striker wheel. And the, the flint first, then the spring. So they can both go flying if you're not careful. Okay, discard that. And I put my finger on the top to prevent that spring from pushing everything out. And you can kind of see the, the flint coming up and out. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to remove the striker field. I'm going to keep my other fingers above it so that flint doesn't go flying away. Now you can see the flint has has popped out now. The tension's off the spring, so we're okay now. There's the flint, and you can see that that's a nice long flint. And the spring is directly underneath. Grab it with my fingers and just pull it out. 
So we've got that part done. Okay, now to show how to fix a non-functioning Funkin device. Okay, just to show that this is not working. No sparks. And the reason why is because there's no flint and there's no flint spring and nothing to hold the flint spring down. So now we're going to repair this. In the previous shot, I showed how to get the BIC flint and the spring out of the BIC lighter. So we're going to put the flint in, and with the case on, it's kind of hard to do with your fingers. It can be done, but I'm going to use some needle nose pliers to lightly hold this right at the very tip and then place it in that brass barrel. It's in there. It fell. I saw it. heard it. Now the spring you can do without the needle nose pliers. You can just set it in. Just make sure it's in there. Yeah, it's in there. And of course it's sticking way above where we want it. So we're going to have to trim that spring so that it's about 5 sixteenths, not 5 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths of an inch above the case, which is about 5 millimeters, somewhere or thereabouts. So I'm going to clip it about right, about right there. So you can see it, the little tiny spring is poking up just above the case. And the only thing left to really do is find some way to secure that spring so it won't fall out and put pressure on it. So in other words, to have it permanently or semi-permanently pushed down. To do this, I found the simplest way is to cut some duct tape or Gorilla Tape. I like to use Gorilla Tape, oh, about eight inches long. And then just tape the middle. Take this tape and put the middle right across the spring. Here, let me get it in view. So we're going to put it right down, put pressure and hold it down while we tape the rest of it. I got it angled a little too far out. Let's get it closer. Put pressure on it, make sure that spring is pushed down. And now put the tape down. Now, and as an extra measure, I'm going to put a cross piece right across there, and that'll really get that spring covered. Tape this down. Don't cover your wind-up knob. And of course don't put it over the, the, the flash export here. So you just move the tape around. It'll be fine. Lock it down. Now that's really secure. I'm 99% sure that this is going to work just fine. I may put an extra piece of tape around here later, but for this demo, we'll just stop here and wind it up. And I might trip, trim off some of this tape that's sticking out. All right. Of course, I have this on my finger, push the button, so I'm going to, going to have it exposed so you can see the flash. One, two, three. So it's working. Okay, let's talk about some problems that could occur. If the wind-up spring 
does not release. So you, you have it wound all the way up. You push the button and there's no movement. What that probably means or could mean is there's too much pressure on the flint. The flint itself may be jammed against the striker wheel so tightly that even though the release mechanism is trying to let the abrasive wheel move, the flint itself is just simply too tight. Or it could have, you could be down to the nub of the flint and it's just jammed at the very tail end. So to rectify this, you either get the spring out and cut it a little shorter so it's not putting so much pressure on that flint. But I doubt that would be the case with our, our particular fix. It's more likely that you're down to the nub of the flint. In such case, you need to get everything out of this. You put a screwdriver in, clean it out, do whatever. Um, if it's assembled, untape it, shake the stuff out, and redo the whole process. Now, another problem you can encounter is that the wheel is spinning, but there's no spark. And let's just say, for example, I forget whether, <laughs> I think I got a flint in here, but yeah, I do. But anyway, let's say you, you push it down, the wheel spins, no spark. What that probably means is that your spring is too short. It's not putting enough pressure on the flint to make a spark. Either that, or you just forgot to put the flint in in the first place. So if you know your spring is too short, you just need to pull it out, get you another uh, flint spring out of a Bic lighter, put it in and cut it and make sure this time the spring is long enough so when you tape it down, you got enough pressure on the flint itself. Now, if the gears are jammed, you know, way down here, that can happen uh, to these things. And one way to work to try and fix this is hold down, and you can do this with the case closed, hold down the release button at the same time Try and wiggle the wind-up key back and forth. If it's really jammed, you'll barely be able to move the wind-up key. But just hold this down and keep doing it. Sometimes that'll that'll unjam the gears. And if if it's really really jammed, you may have to open up the case and then t take the screwdriver and uh, I like to use a little bigger one here and work on the gears while pushing down the release button because in theory you shouldn't have to do the release button but it can help because it can allow that if, if it's trying to move that abrasion wheel you can get it unjammed just simply by doing that another problem that you could have is that if you're trying to wind up your device, let's say you've been using it a long time, and the spring, the internal coil spring, just won't wind. It just keeps, you wind forever and ever and nothing is getting tight. The problem could be with the plunger, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Let me open this up, I've already got it loose. You notice this plunger and the little metal tab that's coming out, that's attached to the plunger. If that metal tab gets bent out over time, flattens out a little bit, either this way or this way, whatever, then 
it might not have enough bite to lock that wheel down. And if it doesn't, when you wind, that spring will just constantly be expanding and, and never tighten up. I'll show you what I mean. Let's just pretend it's flattened out. I'm going to push the button down to simulate. So I can wind. See, it, it just unwinds constantly. I thought the problem with the key spinning and the the main wind-up coil just unwinding prematurely, I thought it was the metal tab at the end of the the plunger, but it turned out not to be the case. What the problem was was the the bigger spring, this plunger spring had lost its tension or lost enough of it that it wasn't pulling the metal tab up against the abrasion wheel to prevent it from spinning. So what I did is I took, I just removed the little metal spring. I had to uh, untape the tape and all that, get the spring out and literally stretch it with my screwdriver and my pliers to make the spring a little bit longer. So then I put it back in. So it, now it has more pre upward pressure. So that little metal tab is fitting more tightly against that abrasion wheel. Now it's remotely possible it could be a combination of both. Maybe the little metal tab was worn ever so slightly and the spring had lost its tension. But anyway, putting a lot more tension on the spring, the plunger spring has totally solved the problem because I can wind this thing up now and that uh, the inner coil spring is not triggering prematurely. So that's a good thing. Here we go. One, two, three. It's working good now. If the thing is hopelessly broken, just throw it away. Buy a new one from for five dollars from Penguin Magic and then apply the Bic fix to it. You're back in business. I want to talk about the flint links of these various cigarette lighters. First, the Bic Slim Flick lighter has a nine millimeter long flint. The Scripto Views lighter, six millimeter long flint. The generic three pack from um, Dollar Tree has a five millimeter long flint. All three of these I got from Dollar Tree. Now the clipper lighter that I got from Walmart is six millimeters long and I since have not been able to find any clipper lighters from Walmart, but we're not going to be using it anyway. The flasher itself, the Funkin' ring, if you will, has a five millimeter long flint. And that was true on all of the ones, the, the ones from Penguin Magic and the one from Mad Hatter Magic. Now, example of the links, here's the, um, uh, the nine millimeter long flint for the Bic Slim Flick. And this is a five millimeter long flint that actually comes in the, the Funkin ring. If you remember the little brass tube that was in these Funkin rings that's, that's down near the bottom, the, when it comes out near that abrasive wheel, there's probably about two millimeters that are not going to be usable. They're just gonna fall out, get inside the case, and then not be usable. If that's true, then we have to subtract those two millimeters from the total of five and say there's only three millimeters of usable flint. If we subtract two millimeters from nine, then we have seven millimeters of usable flint. So that's seven millimeters versus three millimeters. This is a pretty big difference. And that, that's why I want to emphasize the big slim flick. Now do not get 
the Bic Classic. These are Bic Classics. They cost $2 for a pack of, I think in this case it gives you a bonus one. Normally it's a pack of, of five, but you get six. The flints are too big in diameter on these. It's slightly bigger, lighter. Uh, you do not want to buy these. It just simply will not fit inside the Funkin' ring. Bonus tip. Buy a small, powerful, color-silvered neodymium magnet. The internet stores in Hobby Lobby carry these nickel-sized magnets. And put the magnet on the front of the Funkin' device and put the wind-up key flat on the magnet when not in use. That way you should never lose the key. Don't put the magnet on the back of the case because the magnet will grab the key while you're winding. Oh, see what's happening? It just causes you a bunch of problems. So don't put the magnet on the back. Just put it on the front, put the wind-up key on the magnet, and you have plenty of room for your finger. It will not interfere. And that way, hopefully, you will never lose your wind-up key. This is my first truly edited YouTube video, and hopefully my future videos will be better. Hope this helps, and good luck with your sparking flasher funkin' ring.